Hi everyone, so this week we are looking at cooperative strategy or in other words strategic alliances. Alright, so at the end of this lecture, lesson, etc., you should be able to define cooperative strategies and explain why firms use them. Define and discuss the three major types of strategic alliances. Name the business level cooperative strategies and describe their use. Discuss the use of cooperative level strategies uh, in diversified firms. And also you must be able to understand the importance of cross-border strategic alliances as an international cooperative strategy. Explain cooperative strategies risk. Describe two approaches used to manage cooperative strategies. Now remember we talk about cooperative strategies really in a sense talking about um, agreements or strategic alliances between different firms. So as an opening case, we're looking at the Renault Nissan Alliance collaborating to succeed. So in 1999, French-based Renault and Japanese-based Nissan Alliance was launched because each firm lacked the necessary size to develop economies of scale and economies of scope, critical components in the global automobile markets. Now, Renault has a 44.3% stake in Nissan, while Nissan has a 15% stake in Renault, with Brazilian-born Carlos Gosn as CEO for both companies. So there are three guiding values for this synergistic alliance. Trust. So they are working fairly impartial, impartially and professionally. Now there also has to be respect where persons or the firms honor their commitments, um, have their individual liabilities and responsibilities. And of course, transparency is important that, you know, no, each firm not hiding anything from the other. So they have to be open, frank and clear. Now, Renault Nissan BV, a key reason for the Alliance success is a strategic management firm responsible for strategies, synergies and combining resources, capabilities and core competencies. Now, this opening case underscores the complexities of corporate relationships and highlights the many challenges of this corporate level alliance and the business unit level horizontal alliances, which we will look at later on. Under CEO Gozen leadership, each company maintains its separate identity while capitalizing upon their collaboration. So it is not a, it is not a merger, it is not an acquisition. They just have an agreement that they are going to come together and work together. And that is what really a strategic alliance or a cooperative strategy is. So what is cooperative strategy now? Firms collaborate for the purpose of working together to achieve a shared objective. Cooperating with other firms is a strategy that creates value for a customer, exceeds the cost of constructing customer value in other ways, and it establishes a favorable position relative to competitors. Examples of cooperative behavior known to contribute to alliance success is that they are able to actively solve problems, being trustworthy, consistently pursuing ways to combine the partner's resources and capabilities to create value. The collaborative or relational advantage is a competitive advantage developed through a cooperative strategy. So strategic alliance is the cooperative strategy in which firms combine resources and capabilities to create a competitive advantage. Now there are three types of strategic alliances, joint venture, equity strategic alliance and the non-equity strategic alliance and the non-equity strategic alliance include like licensing agreements, distribution agreements, supplier contracts and other outsourcing commitments. A joint venture now is two or more firms that come together to create a legally independent company to share resources and capabilities to develop a competitive advantage. It is optimal when firms need to combine their resources and capabilities to create a competitive advantage that is substantially different from individual advantages and when highly uncertain hyper-competitive markets are targeted. Now for the joint venture, firm A still owns firm A, firm B still owns firm B, but they create another firm, firm C, that they probably own 50-50 and that they can um, it is. It would still be related to their individual firms, but they create another firm to um, compete in the industry, or maybe it's another market that they're operating in. 
An equity strategic alliance is when two or more firms own different percentages of the company they have formed, their original company, by combining some of their resources and capabilities for the purpose of creating a competitive advantage. So say, for instance, the opening case that uh, at the start of the lecture with Renault and Nissan, it would be an equity strategic alliance because they still own their individual companies but they come together so that they can compete better and gain economies of scope and economies of scale. So many direct investments, such as those companies from multiple countries that are making um, or doing business in China, those are completed through an equity strategic alliance. For a non-equity strategic alliance now, this is two or more firms develop a contractual relationship to share some or of their unique resources and capabilities to create a competitive advantage. Now for the non-equity strategic alliance, a new firm is not formed or one firm does not own any stake in the other. It is just two different companies coming together to work together for a particular purpose. So these um, alliances are less formal, there are fewer partner commitments and intimate relationships among partners is not fostered. So uh, um, outsourcing arrangements would be a, a non-equity strategic alliance or if two companies decide that they're going to even work together on just research and development only. Franchise operations are, are non-equity strategic alliances as well. So types of major strategic alliances are joint venture, equity strategic alliance and non-equity strategic alliance. So let's just look at a few examples. For a joint venture in 1999, Germany's Siemens and Japan's Fujitsu each own 50% of the joint venture Fujitsu Siemens Computers BV, later to become Fujitsu Technology Solutions when Fujitsu bought Siemens to sh Siemens's share of the joint venture. For an equity strategic alliance example, Japanese telecom operator Dacoma and the Chinese internet search operator Baidu established an equity strategic alliance in China to distribute games and other mobile phone content. Non-equity strategic alliance example now are licensing agreements, distribution agreements and supply contracts. ULEC Packard actually uses this type of cooperative strategy to license some of its intellectual property. Another major part of non-equity strategic alliance is outsourcing. And we all know that outsourcing is a type of non-equity strategic alliance and it is the purchase of a value creating primary or support activity from another firm. So for instance, Dell Inc. and most other computer firms outsource most or all of their production of laptop computers and often form non-equity strategic alliances to protect IP modularities employed which prevents the contracting partner from gaining too much knowledge or from sharing certain aspects of the business, the outsourcing firm does not want to reveal, and that is um, to protect intellectual property. But why do firms develop strategic alliances? We're going to look at some of those um, reasons and some of the reasons are that most firms lack the full set of resources and capabilities needed to reach their objectives. Cooperative behavior allows firms to create value that they could not develop by acting independently. Collaborative strategies are particularly valuable for small firms with constrained resources for reaching new customers and broadening their distribution channels. Also, for aligning stakeholder interests both inside and outside the organization, as this can reduce environmental uncertainty. Strategic alliances can provide a new source of revenue. It can account for up to 25% or more of a firm's sales revenue. It can be a vehicle for the firm's growth. It can enhance the speed and depth of responding to market opportunities, technological changes, and global conditions. It also allows firms to gain knowledge and experiences to increase competitiveness. So in summary, strategic alliances can reduce competition and enhance a firm's competitive capabilities, create an avenue for the firms 
firm to gain access to resources, allow a firm to take advantage of opportunities that build strategic flexibility and innovate. Now, strategic alliances are done depending on competitive market conditions. So we have three types of market conditions. We have slow cycle markets, fast cycle markets, standard cycle markets. A slow cycle market, this is when a firm's competitive advantages are shielded from imitation for relatively long periods of time and where imitation is costly. These markets are close to monopolistic, close to monopolistic conditions. Railroads and historically telecommunications, utilities, financial services, and steel manufacturers are industries characterized as slow cycle markets. Slow cycle markets are becoming rare due to privatization of industries and economies, rapid expansion of the Internet's capabilities, quick dissemination of information, and the speed with which advanced technologies permit imitation of even complex products. So cooperative strategies can help firms transition from sheltered markets to more competitive ones. So in the slow cycle market, um, you can gain access to a restricted market, you can establish a franchise in a new market, and you can maintain market stability, as example, establishing standards. For fast cycle markets now, these are hyper-competitive, unstable, unpredictable, and complex. Firms' competitive advantages are not shielded from imitation, preventing their long-term sustainability. These conditions virtually preclude establishing long-lasting competitive advantages, forcing firms to constantly seek sources of new competitive advantages while creating value by using current ones. In fast cycle markets, collaboration mindset is paramount. Alliances between firms with current excess resources and capabilities and those with promising capabilities help companies compete in fast cycle markets to effectively transition from the present to the future and to gain rapid entry into new markets. So the reason for strategic alliance in fast cycle markets is that it speeds up development of new goods or service, speeds up new market entry, it helps to maintain market leadership, it forms an industry technology standard, and you can share risky research and development expenses and overcome uncertainty. Now, the final type of market condition is a standard cycle market. Now, this competitive, in this one, competitive advantages are moderately shielded from imitation in these markets, typically allowing them to be sustained for a longer period of time than in fast cycle market situations, but for a shorter period of time than in slow cycle markets. Alliances are more likely to be made by partners that have complementary resources and capabilities. Example, airline alliances provide opportunities to reduce costs and have access to additional international routes. Now, the reasons why standard why companies in standard cycle markets form strategic alliances to gain market power, which would reduce industry overcapacity, gain access to complementary resources, establish economies of scale overcome trade barriers. You would also be able to meet competitive channel challenges from other competitors, pool resources for very large capital products, projects, and learn new business techniques. We're going to move on and look now at business level corporate strategy. So firms combine some of their resources and capabilities for the purpose of creating a competitive advantage by competing in one or more product markets. So you can be in the same industry, but a different product market. So then we have complementary strategic alliances, which can be either vertical or horizontal. Uh, competitive response strategy, uncertainty reducing strategy, and competitive competition reducing strategy are the areas that are satisfied when we look at strategic alliances on a business level. So complementary strategic alliances now. Firms share some of their resources and capabilities 
in complementary ways to develop competitive advantages. And this includes distribution, supplier, or outsourcing alliances where firms rely on upstream or downstream partners to create value. So remember when we did like the vertical integration and uh, we said that a firm may vertically integrate to eliminate your suppliers, but the supplier in the first place was uh, providing value for them that is complementary to their business. So partners may have different learning rates, capabilities to leverage, complementary resources, different market reputations, and different types of actions they can legitimately take. Now there are two forms and that are vertical and horizontal. Vertical complementary strategic alliance now is about partnering firms, sharing resources and capabilities from different stages of the value chain to create a competitive advantage. And of course, outsourcing is, is an example of this type of alliance. The horizontal complementary strategic alliance now is when partnering firms share resources and capabilities from the same stage of the value chain to create a competitive advantage. Commonly used for long-term product development and distribution opportunities. The partners may become competitors, which requires a great deal of trust between the partners. Let us now look at competition response strategy. So competitors now, they will initiate competitive actions to attack the rivals. They will launch competitive responses to their competitors' actions as well. Now, as a strategic alliance, now can be used to combat this and it can be used at the business level to respond to competitors' attacks, primarily formed to take strategic versus tactical actions and also can be difficult to reverse and expensive to operate. An uncertainty reducing strategy now, these are used to hedge against risk and uncertainty. These alliances are most noticed in fast cycle markets. Uncertainty is reduced by combining knowledge and capabilities. So for example, when entering new product markets, emerging economies and establishing technology standards, these are known areas. So by partnering with a firm in the respective industry, a firm's uncertainty is reduced. Competition reducing strategy. These collusive strategies differ from strategic alliances in that they are usually illegal. It is created to avoid destructive or excessive competition. Now we have explicit collusion. This is direct negotiation among firms to establish output levels and pricing agreements that reduce competitive industry competition. And this is illegal because then the firms are um, colluding to set a particular price that would block out the customer. The customer would not have any power because all the firms are selling for the same price. Then there is tacit collusion. This is indirect coordination of production and pricing decisions by several firms, which impacts the degree of competition faced in the industry. Then there is mutual forbearance or um, a form of tacit collusion as well, where firms do not take competitive actions against rivals they meet in multiple markets. So they just is that they have a, a kind of an agreement that they would not take any, you know, do any price war or that kind of thing with their competitor. Now these business level cooperative strategies are used to develop competitive advantages for contributing to successful positions and performance in individual product markets. Developing a competitive advantage using a strategic alliance, the integrated resources and capabilities must be valuable, rare, imperfectly imitable, and non-substitutable. Vertical alliances have the greatest probability of creating competitive advantage. Horizontal are sometimes difficult to maintain since they are usually between competitors. Now, strategic alliance is designed to respond to competition and reduce uncertainty are more temporary than complementary strategic alliances. Of the four business level cooperative strategies, the competition reducing strategy has the lowest probability of creating a sustainable competitive advantage. It also tends to be temporary. For corporate level com for corporate level cooperative strategies, this is a strategy through which a firm collaborates 
with one or more companies for the purpose of expanding its operations. It helps a firm diversify itself in terms of products offered, markets served, or both. It requires fewer resource commitments. It also permits greater flexibility in terms of efforts to diversify partner operations. Now, for diversifying strategic alliances, the firm shares some of their resources and capabilities to diversify into new product or market areas. It allows a firm to expand into new product or market areas without completing a merger or acquisition. It also provides some of the potential synergistic benefits of a merger or acquisition, but with less risk and greater levels of flexibility. It also permits a test of whether a future merger between the partners would benefit both parties. For synergistic strategic alliances, the firms share some of their resources and capabilities to create economies of scope. They also create synergy across multiple functions or multiple businesses between partner firms. Franchising now is when the firm uses a franchise as a contractual relationship to describe and control the sharing of its resources and capabilities with partners. The franchise now is a contractual agreement between two legally independent companies whereby the franchisor grants the right to the franchisee to sell the franchisor's product or do business under its trademark in a given location for a specific period of time. This allows the firm to spread risk and use its resources, capabilities and competencies without merging or acquiring another company. Compared to business level strategies, the corporate level cooperative strategies are broader in scope, they are more complex and therefore more costly. The costs incurred regardless of type selected. Uh, our costs are incurred regardless of the type selected and it is important to monitor, monitor in expenditures. It can lead to competitive advantage and value when it, this successful alliance experiences are internalized. It can also lead to competitive advantage and value when the firm uses such strategies to develop useful knowledge about how to succeed in the future. The firm gains maximum value from this knowledge by organizing it and verifying that it is always properly distributed to those involved with forming and using alliances. We're going to look now at international cooperative strategy. I look at one term that they call a cross-border strategic alliance. Now, this is an international cooperative strategy in which firms with headquarters in different nations combine some of their resources and capabilities to create a competitive advantage. These alliances are sometimes formed instead of mergers and acquisitions, which can be riskier. Cross-border alliances can be complex and hard to manage. So why form a cross-border strategic alliance? A firm may form cross-border strategic alliances to leverage core competencies that are the foundation of its domestic success to expand into international markets. Multinational corporations may outperform firms that operate only domestically. And due to limited domestic growth opportunities, firms look outside their national borders to expand their businesses. Some foreign government policies require investing firms to partner with local firm to enter their markets. Network cooperative strategy. Now, this is a cooperative strategy wherein several firms agree to form multiple partnerships to achieve shared objectives. Stable alliance causes them to have stable alliance network and dynamic alliance network. Now, the effective social relationships and interactions among partners are keys to successful network cooperative strategy. Firms involved in networks of alliances use heterogeneous knowledge and are more innovative. Now, there are disadvantages to participating in networks as a firm can be locked into its partnerships precluding the development of alliances with others. In certain network config configurations such as Japanese Kuretsos, firms in a network are expected to help other firms in that network whenever support is required. Such expectations can become a burden and negatively affect the focal firm's performance over time. 
So Stable Alliance Network, which is a form of network cooperative strategy, these are long-term relationships that, are, that often appear in material industries where demand is relatively constant and predictable. Stable networks are built for exploitation of the economies available between the firms. The Dynamic Alliance Network now is an arrangement that evolves in industries with rapid technological change, leading to short product life cycles primarily used to stimulate rapid value-creating product innovation and subsequent successful market entries. The purpose is often exploration of new ideas. So what are the competitive risks with, strate with, with cooperative strategies? Partners may choose to act opportunistically. Partner competencies may be misrepresented. Partner may fail to make available the complementary resources and capabilities that were committed and one partner may make investment specific to the alliance while the other partner may not. So how do we manage cooperative strategies? We have two primary ways of doing this. Cost minimization and opportunity minimization. So the cost minimization now is that the relationship with the partner is formalized with contracts. Contracts specify how cooperative strategy is to be monitored and how partner behavior is to be controlled. The goal is to minimize cost and prevent opportunistic behaviors by partners. The costs of monitoring cooperative strategy are greater. Formalities tend to stifle partner efforts to gain maximum value from their participation. For opportunity maximization now as a way of managing cooperative strategies, then there has to be focus. This way we maximize partnerships, value creation opportunities. Informal relationships have to be present and fewer constraints allow partners to take advantage of unexpected opportunities, learn from each other, and explore additional market responsibilities. Partners will need a high level of trust that each party will act in the partnership's best interest, which is more difficult in international situations all right so this is the end of this unit on cooperative strategy or um, primarily we would say um, strategic alliances but it does involve some other cooperative strategies as well